What's up? What's up? All right, so in this video, I've been talking about this for a while. I apologize. I'm just now getting around to it. But um, a lot of people ask, well, how do I scrape Ajax sites? You know, sites that require a lot of, you know, Ajax, which stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and uh, XML. And basically, it, if you don't know what that is, you probably need to look it up. But essentially, it allows your... Uh, web page to communicate with your server without the need for page refreshes and things like that. So it's uh, it pretty much uh, revolutionized the web and about, I, I guess, anywhere from like 8 to 10 years ago or so. So uh, nowadays most websites use some form of Ajax or another, but um, that's what that is. But it's a bitch to scrape because I'm going to give you an example of what we're talking about for a particular site and then how you accomplish scraping a site that can give you some problems. So... Um, I go to, uh, just as an example, I'm not saying go out and scrape Applebee's, I'm just looking for an example of a site that um, uses Ajax and things like that, which you cannot scrape under normal means of grabbing an HTML source code and then parsing it using something like Beautiful Soup or something like that, because you'll see what I'm talking about in a second, and once again, Applebee's, don't get pissed off at me, this is just an example, it's a public-facing website, so anyway, I'm just showing this as a as a um, means for learning. So anyway, you click on a site like this and um, go ahead and click on locations. <clears throat> now this thing is actually pulling up the nearest one to my house because I live in Fredericksburg so it's pulling my zip code and then using HTML5 geolocation to pinpoint the closest locations. Now what's interesting about this is that I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go um, I'm going to right click and just view my source and you'll see the address here so let's look at um, let's look at this one here because this one is going to show up now we don't want the default one that shows up for a zip code because say I have um, a bunch of zip codes that I don't live near you know what I mean I, I'm trying to find Applebee's for New York so I'm going to show you for um, an example here. So this, let's look at 2851 Plank Road. So we're in the source code here. I'm going to do a control F and we'll say Plank Road. Guess what? It doesn't exist. It's not in the fucking source. It's not there. So you cannot just request the web page and get this data in here because this is actually a JSON object, which um, something like JavaScript, something or another. I don't know, but basically it's a, it's an it's a means of um, structuring data uh, using JavaScript. It's JavaScript object notation, I believe is what it stands for, or something like that. But um, it's essentially the alternative to XML. Um, but all it is is just structuring data so that a, cl um, a particular uh, client or uh, host and client can then communicate with each other uh, in a common language that both parties understand. So it's uh, the more type of web services, types of things that you end up getting into, like APIs, things like that. So it's just, a, it's a way of uh, structuring data so that, um, like I said, it's easily understandable for business to business. But anyway, when I put in a zip code here, I'm going to put in a zip code that's not near me. So I'm going to do 21771, and I believe, so that's in Frederick, Maryland. So once again, just so you guys know, um, look at Spectrum Drive. So we're going to go ahead and do uh, View Source, View Page Source, and let's go ahead and just Control F and look for Spectrum Drive. So I can show you one more example that is not in here. So we're spelling it just like we're supposed to spell it, and it doesn't exist in the source code. So in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and explain how one particular person would end up trying to automate and scrape a website like this so that you could get data um, automatically. So and just uh, go ahead and we're gonna we're gonna use a Selenium web driver. So in the next video I'm gonna explain how we go ahead and, um, and we just quickly install that using easy install. But uh, anyway just make sure you subscribe. Thank you. Bye.